Here are 35 tips and tricks for Fortnite Chapter 2. Presented by Fortnite Master. For this video, we're going to cover some new Chapter 2 features and mechanics that you might not know about. We've tried to cover a fair amount of beginner's tips, as well as a lot of obscured tricks that even some pros might not be aware of. No matter how experienced you are, or how good you are at the game, at least a few tips from this list should be helpful for you. Without wasting any more time, let's get started. Tip number one, water negates fall damage. Epic Games spared no expense, creating water features for Chapter 2, including details you wouldn't expect to find in a shooter game, such as currents, swimming, and fishing. One major upgrade to water that some players might not be making enough use of is the fact that it negates fall damage. As long as you land in a body of water you can swim in, and not on a shoreline or shallow area, you won't take any fall damage. This can prove useful if you want to cross a lake while simultaneously building upwards or just so happen to fall near a river. Number 2. Tap your jump button repeatedly while swimming to dive in and out of water. This gives you a speed boost and is a good way to rotate if you don't have any mobility. It's currently the fastest method of rotation besides gliding and boating and it makes you look like a dolphin. It's also the only way to make progress when swimming against a current which brings us to our next tip. Tip number 3. Pay close attention to which way a river is flowing before you try and swim in it. Though you can swim in any direction you want in a lake, swimming the wrong way in a river is extremely slow and won't get you anywhere fast. If you really have to swim against the current, you can make a little bit of progress, but even speed swimming in the wrong direction can be pretty slow. It's great exercise, but it's terrible mobility. Tip number 4. It is possible to drown. Most players might think that drowning is impossible in Fortnite since you can't dive for more than a couple seconds. However, if you get trapped under a player's floor while swimming in water, you begin to lose one health or shield per second. You have to be pretty low on health to actually die by drowning, but it's not a bad idea to be prepared in case you find yourself stuck under somebody's builds. Tip number 5. Fish and ripples to get better loot. Ripples appear randomly in large bodies of water across the map, such as rivers, oceans, and lakes. When you fish at a ripple, you won't get common loot drops like rusty cans or small fries. Instead, you have a chance of getting a flopper, a slurp fish, or a rare, epic, or legendary gun. However, don't expect to farm infinite loot from one ripple. They typically disappear after 1-4 to four catches. Tip number 6. Fish make great meds. Most players write off Chapter 2's new fishing mechanic as a fun side activity, but fish are actually viable sources of healing. Floppers give 50 health each, and you can stack up to 4 of them in one slot. It takes 1 second to eat a flopper, making them a great alternative to bandages and medkits. Slurpfish, the most rare form of fish in the game, are currently the best form of healing. They offer 50 health or shield points instantly, and you can stack up to 3 of them in one slot. A full stack of them is worth 150 HP, the same amount as a full stack of shield potions or minis is worth. Since slurpfish are flexible and faster to use, this makes them more worthwhile to hold in the long run. Tip number 7. If it's liquid, you can probably fish in it. Most Fortnite players are aware that you can fish in open bodies of water like rivers, but there are some much weirder fishing spots to be found around the map. One example is this vat of purple liquid in steamy stacks. It looks pretty unsanitary, but you can both swim and fish to your heart's content. Just keep in mind that the smaller a body of water is, the less likely you are to find a ripple in it. Also, if your entire diet consists of sardines you caught from a vat of purple radioactive goo, you'll probably grow an extra toe or something. Tip number 8. It is possible to kill a player with a rusty can. By far the most obscure item in Fortnite Chapter 2, you can get yourself a rusty can by fishing anywhere there isn't a ripple. Rusty cans are throwable items and have about the same range as a grenade. They're definitely not a practical weapon as they only deal 20 damage per hit, but they're a great troll item if you know another player is on low health. You can also pick up your rusty can after throwing it, as you should because recycling is cool. Tip number 9. Hide in open dumpsters or hay bales to surprise your enemies. From alleyways to random hilltops, open dumpsters can be found all over the map. To enter one, just swallow your pride, accept that you and your KD are garbage, and press your interact key. Whether you're low on health, want to surprise an enemy, or just want to go AFK for a minute or two, dumpsters can make great hiding spots. Just like dumpsters, the dome-shaped hay bales in Frenzy Farm make great hiding spots. 
The process of hiding in one is exactly the same, minus that bit about the garbage KD. And they're less obvious hiding spots than dumpsters, since there are various types of hay bales littered throughout Frenzy Farm. Tip number 10. More than one player can hide in a dumpster or a hay bale. If you and your entire squad needs a hiding spot, do not worry. There's always more room for trash. Just don't get too comfortable, because enemy players can also hide in the same dumpster as you. Also, keep your eyes out for jiggling dumpsters or noisy hay bales. If you hear noises coming from a hideout or see one shaking, that means at least one person is hiding inside of it. Tip number 11, you can break dumpsters and hay bales. Both dumpsters and hay bales can be broken in two hits. Players exiting a trash can or hay bale have a short delay on shooting their guns, which means you can get the first shot on them. If you want to make sure there's nobody watching you from a nearby trash can, or want to pull a reverse ambush, this is a great trick to keep in your back pocket. Tip number 12. Dumpsters, hay bales, and umbrellas negate fall damage. If you jump into a dumpster or a hay bale from above, it'll automatically make you hide inside of it. This effectively negates any damage you might have taken, had you jumped from the same height and landed on the ground. Umbrellas are now bouncy, like tires, and negate fall damage as well. Tip number 13. If you shoot at the ground with a bandaged bazooka, it drops a bandage. The bandaged bazooka was the only completely new gun to be added for chapter 2. Instead of damaging enemies, it heals whoever you point the gun at. Due to its long cooldown time and hefty 2 inventory slot requirement, some players might rather carry bandages. If you aim a bandaged bazooka at the ground away from any players, it drops one bandage per shot, effectively making the bandaged bazooka an infinite source of bandages. Tip number 14. You can carry knocked out teammates and enemies. If you want to pick up a knocked out player, just look at them and press the carry button. You'll sling them over your back, and though your ability to run will be disabled, you can walk as far as you want until they bleed out. You even have the ability to yeet the player you're carrying. Yes, yeeting is now an official Fortnite mechanic. Tip number 15. A new setting has been added that makes editing your builds much easier. Under Game Settings, there's a new option that you can toggle called Confirm Edit on Release, which is off by default. Normally, when you edit a build, you have to press your edit key, select the boxes you want to remove or add to your edit, then press your edit key again to confirm the edit. Playing with Confirm Edit on Release on will make it so that you don't have to press your edit key again to confirm the edit. As soon as you let go of the boxes you want to edit, your edit key will instantly be confirmed. Though this may seem like a small change, it makes a huge difference when trying to edit quickly and should definitely be turned on if you want to reach your editing potential in Fortnite. Tip number 16. You can carry knocked out teammates while riding on the back of a motorboat. If you're in a pinch but don't have the time to revive your teammate where you are, try carrying your teammate while riding a motorboat. Though you can't drive a motorboat while carrying a teammate, you can ride it as a passenger. If you can get another teammate to drive the boat, your entire squad has a safe method of transportation out of whatever dangerous situation you might find yourself in. Tip number 17. Place ramps in front of your squad's boat when the driver boosts to travel twice as far. This trick will make you the fastest squad on the island. Sit on the passenger seat, select your ramps, and aim towards the front of the boat. Wait for your teammate to boost, then spam build ramps directly in front of your boat until you lift off. Your boat will travel up a ramp or two, then launch forward at high speed. The boat becomes a little harder to control when doing this trick, but the speed boost is definitely worth it. Tip number 18. Hold right click to have more freedom while aiming your boat's missile. Right click activates your boat's targeting camera by default, which allows you to look around more without the boat changing its direction. Though the boat still follows your cursor, it's not quite as sensitive as it is without the targeting camera disabled. This will allow you to be more accurate with your boat's missiles, while still traveling in the intended direction. Tip number 19. Boats take damage while traveling on land. Most players are probably aware of the fact that boats can be driven on land. Though they can be faster than walking, they're definitely not the most effective method of land transportation. This is mostly due to the fact that they're slow and uncontrollable when traveling uphill. But something most players might not know is that the boat takes one damage per second of movement. This means that no matter how fast you travel, your boat will still take one damage as long as you're moving. Water vehicles take damage on land? Who would have thunk it? Tip number 20. You can heal boats with campfires. Epic Games introduced the ability for campfires to heal vehicles in Chapter 1, but with all of the vehicles removed besides the new motorboat, some players might not think to heal boats. 
Though it's probably not the most useful mechanic if you plan on using your boat in water, if you're already traveling on land and happen to spot a campfire, it's not a bad idea to stop at it and gain another 50 seconds of movement. Speaking of campfires, Tip number 21, you can reactivate used campfires for 300 wood. As of the chapter 2 update, the campfire item was removed from the game. Natural campfires are still scattered across the map, but in late game scenarios, you'll often find that some of them have already been used. If you're desperate for healing and happen to have some logs on you, you can relight used campfires for a steep price of 300 wood. Simply look at the campfire and hit E to interact with it to light it again. Now if only there was a guitar item so we could sing some campfire songs. Tip number 22, gas pumps and fuel tanks are now explosive. If you shoot a gas pump or a fuel tank, they'll blow up. The explosive will knock back any nearby players and damage enemies. These props are so sensitive that even one pickaxe hit will result in a delayed explosion. Tip number 23, an entire squad of four can hide inside these giant bushes. If your squad needs a hiding spot but can't find any dumpsters or hay bales, these bushes make a great alternative. They're very common and hide an entire squad better than regular bushes hit a single player in Chapter 1. Tip number 24, use the Steamy Stacks cooling towers to glide away. The two massive towers at Steamy Stacks stamped with a picture of Kevin the Cube actually provide great rotation. If your squad drops at Steamy, you don't want to miss out on these cooling towers. Similar to Pressure Plant from Chapter 1, jumping over the bubbling vats of purple liquid will send you into skydiving mode. Just activate your glider and enjoy the free flight into the next circle. Tip number 25, you can zip across the power lines on the eastern side of the map. Hidden in plain sight, some players might discount the set of power lines on the Chapter 2 map as purely decorative. However, you can actually use the power lines as zip lines. There are two ground level entry points for the power lines, one in Retail Row and one near Steamy Stacks. Though this method of rotation isn't very practical for getting into zone, it will come in handy every now and then. Tip number 26, sitting in the sludge and slurpy swamp will refill your health and shield. This swamp isn't called slurpy for no reason. It's home to a slurp juice factory with a pretty bad septic system. The swamp is filled with slurp juice and sitting in it will give you one health or shield per second. If one hit point per second isn't enough for you, there are a couple of sewage pipes found along the perimeter of the slurp factory that give you two health or a shield per second if you stand right next to them. If you rather not dip your toes into the swamp, you can also break the lid on either of these slurp juice vats and sit in the reservoir. Tip number 27, breaking slurp containers gives a splash heal effect. Various vessels of slurp can be found in slurpy swamp and craggy cliffs, such as barrels, tankards, and trucks. Standing next to these slurp containers while breaking them will give you health or shield. The amount of HP you get varies based on how big the containers are. For instance, small barrels give 10 HP each, while the tanks on the back of the trucks give 25 HP each. Since these slurp containers give a splash heal effect, you might want to call the rest of your squad over before breaking them. Ah, <sighs> refreshing. Tip number 28, you can break slurp containers by building through them. If you want to get HP from slurp containers, but don't want to spend a ton of time farming them, try building a pyramid or a stair through them. The slurp container will break instantly, and as long as you're standing within the radius of the splash effect, you'll still get the HP. Just make sure to only use this trick on single barrels or trucks. If you place a pyramid on a pile of barrels, you'll only get the HP from one of them, and the other barrels will just disappear. Tip number 29, lily pads are very bouncy. If you find yourself deep in Slurpy Swamp with a long rotation ahead of you, don't worry. There are lily pads scattered all over the swamp that make for great mobility. They can boost players up to three tiles each, similar to bouncers, and there are quite a few lily pad paths that lead from one end of the swamp to another. Though they won't get you incredibly far, they're a safer method of travel than swimming in the open or riding a boat. Tip number 30, if you have extra materials, upgrade your weapons at an upgrade bench to increase their rarity. Upgrade benches are scattered across the map and can be found at both POIs and landmarks. With enough materials, you could potentially use an upgrade bench to upgrade a weapon from common rarity to legendary rarity. Upgrade benches take a minimum of 50 of all material types to a maximum of 350 of all material types. Though upgrade benches can be quite taxing in arena mode due to the low material cap, they're definitely a viable option in casual matches. Tip number 31, you can farm materials from player build structures. This new feature can prove extremely useful if you're running low on mats and can't find anything else to farm nearby. 
Farming wood structures gives you two materials back. Farming brick gives you three, and farming metal gives you four. If you farm metal without hitting the weak points, you can actually get seven materials back. This trick doesn't work on wood or brick builds due to their low amount of hit points. If you're playing arena mode, it wouldn't be a bad idea to build your one by ones out of metal. If you do, you can harvest 70% of the materials you use to build your box, so you'll have them for later. Tip number 32, all chests are now guaranteed to spawn. In chapter 1, chests didn't have a guaranteed spawn rate. As of chapter 2, things have changed. All chests on the map spawn every game, no matter what. Nuff said. Tip number 33, rare chests have been added to the game. They have a low chance of replacing regular chests, so if you find one, consider yourself lucky. These chests are blue and silver, and have an increased chance of giving you an epic or legendary gun. In addition to ammo, materials, and a high rarity gun, rare chests have a high chance of giving you two consumable items, throwable items, or a bandaged bazooka. Tip number 34, rare ammo boxes have been added to the game. Just like rare chests, they're blue and silver, and have a low chance of replacing an ammo box. Rare ammo boxes are slightly longer than regular ammo boxes, and they have a chance of dropping an extra stack of ammo, or a healing item. And last but not least, tip number 35. There's buried treasure hidden at Sweaty Sands. If you scour the beaches of Sweaty Sands, you might notice rings of sand here and there. These rings of sand are actually buried treasure chests, and you can use your harvesting tool to dig them up. Thank you guys for watching this video. For those who are new to the channel, if you've enjoyed this video, check out some of the others on the right side of the screen. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notifications for whenever a new guide shows up. You guys are great and we hope to keep making videos that you all like. From over here at Fortnite Master, my name is The Saved One and we're out. Peace.